our journey begins here on Earth. Voila. <laughs> Holy of Holies. Such a good stump. The changing global environment caused the extinction of 90% of life in the oceans and 40% of life on land. While mass extinction doesn't happen very often, the process of change is occurring constantly. At any point in time, we can find plants and animals that are first evolving, going extinct, persisting through time. Here's our friend Kirby, a lungfish who lives at the museum now, but whose ancestors have been around for hundreds of millions of years. Lungfish have persisted for a very long time. So why do some animals become extinct while others persist? And how do new kinds of animals first evolve? Changing environments cause both extinction and evolution. his angry face. He's such a grumpy old man. He's like, kids these days. It's got two eyes, but it's like both on the side. Look at that. Whoa, it's like a flattened fish. Oh my god, I can't believe it's so weird. It's so weird. What is that. Oh, I love albinos. I love them. Whoa. Mr. Albino Turtle. With his little pointy nose. Oh my gosh, he is the sweetest friend. Oh, look at his purple head. He has a purple noggin. He is E.T. <laughs> Alright, try it out. Spin it faster. Oh yeah, see if, if the faster you do it, the more you can see it. <laughs> this has been a zen moment with Gizmo. That's nice. Would you look at those?
those clouds. Mornings with Zen Gizmo. Send me your Zenmo account. A thousand ways to Zen with Gizmo. Gizmo's easy too. Up. Hey, dude. Munching on that chronic. Oh. That was just me, bro, saying munching on that chronic. Oh. 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 Oh, my God. You are right out my window. Well, dude, check out that rock. Epic. Okay, so this is a literal army of wild turkeys in our front yard. There are so many of them. I have never seen this many turkeys in my life. So many turkeys. They're going to the turkey motherland. Wow. <laughs> that is insane. I never even knew they rolled in such huge posses. That's the biggest pack I've seen. I usually see them in like groups of like 10 to less. Wow. So I think, I think the big ones are the parents and then like the more medium sized ones. Wow. We have some really good pictures of them. Ooh, now she's shaking a tail feather. Now she's singing. There you go, bro. That's my homie. I just never knew she had so much to say. Ooh, full puff, full puff. Nope, not at all. Wow. Wow. It's just so majestic every time. Oh, it's so cool. They're like, all right, that's our exit. We do this show three times a day. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Okay, so Mother Nature is getting real up in here. Not sure where all this craziness came from, but it's pretty lit. It is pretty lit. Ah! Whoa, whoa. Oh, God. <laughs> He's a live one. Don't let Gizmo eat it. No. Wow. That's huge. Do you 
the flash. Is, is that your head or is it your butt? Take a turn on the flash. Hello, Mr. Toad. You just having a little toad day. Mr. Toad. Hopping along your little toad way. Chow down, yes. So good. Oh yeah, get the good stuff. Yum. What are you doing, lamb? Are you trying to escape? Are you trying to get to the other side of the fence? You can't eat the fence. Oh, little lamb friends. You are little lamb friends. Just eating grass together all the live long day. Yep. It's pretty yummy. Oh yeah, get that good stuff. Get that good stuff right there. Um, so I just found an alien. This creature will risk anything for the luscious fruits that await at the tip of the branch. He is determined. It's a brain plant. Doesn't it look like a brain? Hey buddy. Hey, buddy. Oh, he's reaching for you lovingly. I'm gonna put him on one of these little plants. There you go. There you go, friend. Guy. He's like, I can't turn my back to you, though. You got it. Find your way, little friend. There you go. There you go. What do you think of that, Gizmo? Gotta work up some good ass wishes. Hopefully that works. Yeah. Mother Earth, my home girl. Little bunny munch. Just a couple of little munching bunnies. Little bunny butt. You are cute and chewing on some grass. You are cute and running in the grass with your mama goat. Are you playing with his tail, Mr. Little Tiny Donkey? You are very cute. I can hardly stand it. I'm a stone man. Do 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 do. I'm a stone man. Ooh. They're big though. Really, really apocalyptic. It's like speaking.
sexy birthday moon right there, baby. Oh, yeah. The literal perfect fall bouquet. I just discovered that cattails are magical fairy dust makers. Woo! That's how I like to get down. <laughs> so this just came out of the plum blue. Mother Nature. Flex, 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 flex. Sit at this lovely picnic table beneath a lovely tree about 15 feet from a very active hive. <laughs> Caution. Sit here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the Hitchcock movie. The birds. Whoa. Shit's going down. Why, Gizmo? It's like we're in the Wizard of Oz. Literally in the Alfred Hitchcock movie, The Crows, right now. Oh God. <laughs> Like that is straight up beautiful. The blue of it is just so beauteous blue. And look at that bad boy. Oh. Hey birds. Weathering the storm. Yeah, it's down here. It's blizzarding. Here you go. First snow of the season, girl. It's a doozy. It's beautiful. Better than raining ash, I'll tell you that much. Oh. Gizmo, come on. Was that fun? Oh yeah. A processional of does. Oh, is she the third one? Oh, oh, there's one by the apple tree. Oh, there she goes. That's the fourth one. Cute. Hey buddy, you having some fun in the snow? 
foggy. Ho, ho, ho. Come here, silly. A love poem to earth. Breath of remembrance, the heft of benevolence, the prevalence of holy roots, an aria winding its way through. I bow in awe of your aqua blues, rosy pussy toes and prairie smoke rouge, cowboy's delight and Perry's primrose. My toes say hello to the rojo dirt. The watercolor sunsets give me energy spurts. The wind blurts out complex emotions. Oh, the lucky times I've canoodled with the ocean. I've a notion this curvy goddess earth sees me baffled by her allure. Cactus blossoms so radiant, mountain hot springs so pure. The Ferris wheel is plain without the seashore. Cartwheels in the soft sand. My outstretched hands thank her sweetly, and I love her even more deeply. Drawn like hypnosis to the rock jags sloping steeply, consumed completely and without protest by the full moon in her luminous apogee. Bewitch me in this symphony of pull and release, the cycle's choreography wordlessly pleading for peace, the epic feats of animal drama, my happenstance glimpses of toad, owl, deer, hawk, crane, beaver, little striped whiptail lizards, dolphins, and llamas. The flora and fauna upon my ever-seeking curious path. The soul-shaking wrath of an earthquake or a mighty hailstorm. Contemplating for hours how the stalactites and stalagmites form. Full body warm in the prairie's vast perfection. The way the breeze often nudges the direction I should go. The magic that emerges when I trust her flow. Planting peppers and tomatoes and marveling as they grow and ripen, gently caressing and pressing my face to the mountain lichen. The way my muscles tighten on the freeway and relax as soon as I play in the woods. Jubilation as it should be. Oh, to seek an island infused with intoxicating amaranths, mm. anthurium, calathea, helisonia, thespesia, popolnia, plumeria, psilocybin. To see this labyrinthine lady when she's thriving, her rhythm waters rising, her lush, prolific soil providing, me sliding down her majestic sand dunes, hearing the melodic tunes being improvised by her quaking aspens, alders, and catalpas so alive. You look for their faces. The human world traces their stories along her skin, and dolphin fins write sonnets inside the ancient swirls of her waters. Earthly masterpieces we are tasked to pass reverently along lineages 
of sons and daughters. Do not preach guilt nor teach ego, but go the way of preaching the worth of the air, the dirt, the seasons, the waters. Our one and only queen is aching as our actions make her polluted while she gets hotter and hotter in terrifying spikes. This isn't a petty or trite concern. Bottom line, we lose her if we don't learn. And if we don't learn, she'll cease to turn. Our precious leafy canopies will burn. The seas will churn angrily and with eruptions of vengeance. We must disconnect from these addictions, self-chosen afflictions and poisons to pursue a planetary transcendence. This is a matter of our dependence on her to continue the big show. The lavender dawns glow, the ability to row across a crystal lake and see the fish leaping to keep adventurers seeking new snow-capped peaks, to allow bare feet the treat of soft sandy beaches, to ripen our sweet peaches to hear and utilize what this life giver we walk upon teaches us all. I don't want to lose the chance to pirouette beneath a far off waterfall, to hear the call of new birds soaring, to find the roaring wild and let my inner child skip through new wildflowers for many happy hours. We mustn't devour this gift we've all been given. Collectively, we need to empower our earth-loving selves and be driven to protect her. If we neglect her, she'll do the same to us in less than no time. I am not through with these potent sky hues, nor am I done stretching my spine amidst the silvery lupines. I've never seen rainforest vines. I've never climbed a mountain in another country. I pray to the bumblebees, the bending marsh reeds, the aspen leaves, and come free. To the veritable sundry of creatures, great and small, the plant life barely budding and reaching tall, I find myself turning from metal signs and paint lines and big concrete walls until I can fall into soft grass and bask in spirit. If you press your ear to a conch shell or lean over a country wishing well, I swear you can hear it. I sit endeared to the earth, and when I feel the fear of losing her, I try to clear it by believing my love is greater, that all the love placed in every delicate and intricate crease and crevice upon her face will not be a waste. I chase the feeling I found in my childhood pumpkin patch, the thrill of unlatching a gate to a new garden landscape, the great escape of the yucca line desert plateaus, the glow of fireflies in their fairy tale dancing. I'll never be through romancing you, earth. I see and breathe and feed from your ever unfolding mirth. Lady, I'll strive to put you first forever. I endeavor to show my perpetual awe by any measure. Madam Gaia, you are our only, inestimable, irreplaceable, pivotal treasure. Stem, leaf, fin, scale, tail, shell, tide, swell, rainbow, prism, feather. You are the source of our life, triumph. Strife, lessons, passion, inspiration, and pleasure. I hope together we can strengthen this incomparable survival tether. At this sacred revival, I am no fair weather worshiper. I am humbled by your faintest wheat field eyelash flutter and your muse-like curvature. Mm. Those sure are some beautiful clouds. Thank you for letting me speak aloud my great love for this place 
our home, our place of birth, our earth. These scenes have all been gifted to me through my lens, and they lend me the chance for great, great awe. I applaud her at every turn. I yearn for more green grass between my toes. Mm. Whatever grows upon her, I wish to see, to include in my many many reveries. Mm. The lilies, the Buddha trees, the moon majesty, the clouds and rainbows enfolding me, the fairy slippers in the woods that always deliver delight. The day, the night, the cumulus clouds, the way that we are allowed to absorb these wonders. We cannot plunder it. Oh, the columbines, so divine. The brotherhood of turkeys, the stalking coyote, we're free to feel it all for now, but we've got to protect it somehow. Mm, the babbling swirls, the little tide pool twirls, the universe unfurls.